this here is real misinformation. Now, this label says BPA-free, and the BPA-free label is condoned by the FDA, the same agency that over the past three years has made it very clear that they would like to be the arbiter of what constitutes misinformation and disinformation, or as some people have called it, anything that hurts the bottom line of their sponsors. Now, these are not my words. It's very interesting. Now, kids are supposed to be drinking out of this, and as an adult, we're going to feel good. You know, we're giving them a BPA-free bottle, so there's no toxins here, right? This is totally safe, and it's wonderful, right? And that's absolutely not true. BPA is one of many chemicals found in plastic, and I think this is highly misleading. So we're not doing anybody a favor by putting that on there, you know, except for the people selling you these bottles, making you believe that this is all, you know, good and it's safe and, you know, you don't uh, incur any harm from drinking out of these bottles. And I think that's absolutely incorrect. You know, it's shameful that we're allowing them to advertise this because the thing is, we've been brainwashed so much that, you know, basically there is information out there that, you know, may not always be correct or some agency might not agree with this information, we must be shielded from this because we are not smart enough to make up our own minds. So therefore, things are labeled misinformation, disinformation, they must be censored, right? They're censored from social media, they're censored from public view, they're censored from the media so that we're just not exposed to these because it's very dangerous for us. I think this is really terrible. I mean, I think we are smart enough uh, to make up our own minds to, you know, read up on things and educate ourselves. And I find it highly insulting that, you know, we have fed certain information. But beyond that, if there was at least a consistency, you know, that's something I could still understand. But obviously, certain products where, you know, it serves the benefit of one industry can put very misleading labels on there, and that's okay. Whereas mm -hmm. other products, you know, where I really don't see the harm in promoting them are massively censored. And again, if you look at kind of which of these products, you know, has a larger monetary support, maybe even to agencies like the FDA, then it kind of becomes a bit more clear. Okay, so back to BPA or bisphenol A. Bisphenol A is one of many chemicals found in plastic. And if BPA is not used, then a substitute like BPS or BPF are usually used, which may be in fact worse than BPA. And we need these chemicals in there to be able to make the plastic that it can be moldable, that we can form it into containers and other things. So we need some of these chemicals in there to get this final shape. So I think it's very difficult to have it completely free of all of those chemicals. We can take out certain ones and replace them with others, but arguably many of them might be worse, right? And then there's phthalates in there and other chemicals as well that are also problematic. Another example is nonstick pans. So now many of them are labeled, or Teflon pans we call them, PFOA free. You see that sticker on there, PFOA free, right? And this is very misleading as well because there are hundreds of PFAs or per and polyfluoroalkyl substances. We also call them forever chemicals. I did a video about this. These are uh, very problematic. I mean, they are accumulating in our body and they are around forever. I mean, that's why they're called forever chemicals. The problem is now if we take PFOA out, we're putting a substitute in usually because you have to make a non-stick surface. So you need a chemical in there again to have this property of the surface. The issue is these molecules become smaller and smaller as we substitute them. And the smaller these molecules, it doesn't make them safer. It's actually easier for them to get into your body. You know, they are now uh, smaller, they can be absorbed easier, right? So the bottom line is really replacing one toxic chemical with another does not solve the problem. And for the industry being regulated, again, the FDA should say, well, all of these substances are bad. The industry will say, well, but we have to use something to make it work. And so they make a compromise. I don't think we should compromise here. We should tell people, look, it's still crap. Yeah, you can buy a plastic bottle if you feel, and this one chemical is not in there, but there's others in there. It's like the cigarette company saying, hey, we made a cigarette that doesn't have nicotine. Great, nicotine is problematic, we know that. But if you light up a cigarette, there's hundreds or even thousands of substances in there that once you light them up, become carcinogens, so they're cancer causing, right? And taking one thing out, it's not making the cigarette safe by any means, right? And same with these bottles. I think we should have better transparency. We should be labeling this. Look, this is crap. If you want to buy it, fine. But here, here are your risks, right? And as a substitute, you say, well, if you really want to have something that doesn't have these toxins in it, especially when we think of children, we don't want to expose children to all this crap, right? Then instead of getting anything that's made from plastic that's in contact with food, get something made from glass, stainless steel, or ceramic. Those are absolutely fine. But I think we have to have this honesty and transparency. And because, you know, Again, given an agency like the FDA, hey, we are regulating everything. We are making sure that you get the right information, you know, then at least stick to your guns, you know, like say, hey, look, obviously um, we're going to help regulate this, but we're advertising, you know, we're telling you everything that's in there that's bad for you so you can make your own decisions. But selectively, 
favoring one industry over another, I think is not a good idea. Now, oftentimes agencies like the FDA, they um, censor information that despite being true, could, in their opinion, lead people to make incorrect assumptions. I'll give you an example. So in my clinic, one of the modalities we do is whole body cryotherapy, so cold therapy. And in some European countries, these are medical devices used to treat rheumatoid arthritis and a few other disorders. And they have studies. I mean, when we do a medical study published in medical journals, these are usually internationally recognized. So we have that as a background to it. So on our website, this was years ago, I just listed it. I said, well, in these countries, this is a medical device. And here are the studies that support that. Got a call from the FDA, have to take that down. I'm like, okay, well, why? I mean, I'm clearly saying that, you know, this is correct what I'm writing on there. Yes, we understand that this is correct. However, these studies that you're quoting were not done on American soil. Now, I'm not joking here. So first I'm thinking, okay, well, hang on one second. So we have studies done in Germany and Switzerland and Poland, right? So, you know, European countries with a big history, especially when it comes to medicine and medical research, arguably um, some of these countries might do more research in certain fields than we do here in the United States. So then my question was, well, you know, again, how come that I cannot uh, quote this? No, because on American soil, when it has to be done here. Of course, the question that is, you know, are the laws of uh, physics and, you know, the laws of chemistry and medicine in general different in America than they are in other countries? But it didn't even go that far. So I said, fine, took it off, you know, and we were good. You know, they were very friendly about it. You know, they were nice about it. But they're very clear that if they feel, you know, again, this is something that has not been filed with the FDA because it was done in another country. And even though... Again, there it has been accepted and these are medical devices, you know, so these are used there, you know, in regulation uh, with uh, the countries there, with the, you know, health agencies of those countries. Cannot say that here because then people might make the assumption that these are approved by the FDA and which they are clearly not because we haven't spent the money to file and submit studies and conduct studies here. And, you know, there's a lot of fees involved and most people don't know this, but if you do your own study here, which you certainly can, and submit to the FDA, I mean, the fees can be in the hundreds of thousands of dollars, which for many people like myself, that is something, of course, that I cannot do. So that's sort of how these agencies work. The FDA regulates verbiage a lot of times, what we can say, right? What claims can be made. And again, for this claim to be made, you have to file with the FDA and you have to submit, um, you know, for review, a study that you've conducted and a pile of money attached to that because it's expensive, right? To review this stuff. Now, Big companies like pharma companies do this all the time. They spend millions of dollars and they spend a lot of uh, uh, fees to approve their products, right? And when you look at the budget of the FDA, I think it's over 50% of it, if I'm not incorrect here, that is a result of um, fees from expedited drug reviews from pharmaceutical companies. In other words, in order to get your medication to market sooner, you can pay extra fees and get it approved faster, which also means there's a shorter time that it has been on the market where we could have observed for potential side effects right but that's one thing how these agencies generate money and you know and some people i can't have an opinion on this say there may be a conflict of interest here think of big companies like you know uh, the plastic industry the petrochemical industry right because plastics are made from petroleum these are petroleum products and of course petroleum has a lot of carcinogens so a lot of uh, toxins in there that i would say well we take most of those out and then we do it in a certain way and we take one or two chemicals that we've been studying for quite a while they were bad we, we took those out so now we can label it and we're good of course the rest of it is highly misleading because the fda or any government agency my opinion uh, should have the health of the consumer in mind that should be the number one priority and i'm a bit uh, you know uh, confused about if that really is a priority we're seeing here i do believe we need a government agency every country should have a government agency regulating any any product right that's in contact with food or medications i think that's hugely important because otherwise it would be wild west and we would have a lot of uh, issues right but it should be universal and it should not be based on um, special interest groups that benefit that agency but it should be based on what's best for the consumer, what's best for the citizen of that country.